الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وفقها في الدين يا رب العالمين اللهم افتح علينا بحكمتك وانشر علينا برحمتك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم We speak inshallah today about one of the stories of the Quran and this story is uh, recited in Surah Al-Qalam and it is a continuous, contiguous story that is narrated one time in the Quran and uh, inshallah we will start by reciting these verses in Surah Al-Qalam and then we will go over the story and uh, start the reflection uh, on the verses and the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إنا بلوناهم كما بلونا أصحاب الجنة إذ أقسموا ليصرمنها مصبحين ولا يستثنون فطاف عليها طائف من ربك وهم نائمون فأصبحت كالصريم فتنادوا مصبحين أن اغدوا على حرثكم إن كنتم صارمين فانطلقوا وهم يتخافتون ألا يدخلنها اليوم عليكم مسكين وغدوا على حرد قادرين فلما رأوها قالوا إنا لضالون بل نحن محرومون قال أوسطهم ألم أقل لكم لولا تسبحون قالوا سبحان ربنا إنا كنا ظالمين فأقبل بعضهم على بعض يتلاومون قالوا يا ويلنا إنا كنا طاغين عسى ربنا أن يبدلنا خيرا منها إنا إلى ربنا راغبون كذلك العذاب ولعذاب الآخرة أكبر لو كانوا يعلمون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم An interpretation of the meanings أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم Verily we have tried them as we tried the people of the garden when they swore to pluck the fruit of the garden in the morning and make no exception for the poor, no mention of Allah's will. Then there passed by on the garden a visitation, fire from your Lord, at night, and burned it while they were asleep. So the garden became black by the morning, like a pitch dark night in ruins. Then they called out one to another as soon as the morning broke, saying, Go to your harvest in the morning, if you would pluck the fruit. So they departed, conversing in secret low tones, saying, No poor man shall enter upon you today. And they went in the morning with strong intention, thinking that they have the power to prevent the poor taking anything of the fruits. But when they saw the garden, they said, Verily, we have gone astray. Then they say, Nay, indeed, we are deprived of the fruits. The best among them said, Did I not tell you you should praise your Lord? They said, Glory to our Lord. Verily, we have been wrongdoers. And they turned one against another, blaming. They said, Woe to us. Verily, we were transgressors and disobedient. We hope that our Lord will forgive us in exchange, and ex in exchange a better garden with this one. Truly we turn to our Lord wishing for good, 
that he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may forgive our sins and reward us in the hereafter. Such is the punishment in this life. But truly the punishment of the hereafter is greater if they but knew. The story of the people of the garden, al-jannah. Al-jannah means here, that doesn't mean the paradise, the, the eternal gardens that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised the believers in the hereafter. The word jannah in Arabic means every dense garden that, is, that has, has lush, luscious, it's filled with, with trees, and it's so condensed and so dense that it's hard to see through it. And that's Jannah, meaning something you hide something. Actually, it's something that's just masqueraded by the greenery within. And that's how the Jannah got its name. And you say Jannah Layl. That means that the, the, the night has Jann, meaning it's hiding everything with its darkness. So that's the root of the word. So when you hear the word Ashab al Jannah, it doesn't truly mean the believers in the paradise. It means people that have a beautiful orchard, beautiful garden that is very fruitful. It's filled with, with uh, lush fruit, luscious fruits and, and a very, very wealthy uh, harvest. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about a trial and tribulation. And the context of the surah and the context of the story is uh, a Mecca context where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to his prophet, to the believers, that these unbel the unbelievers of Quraysh, the unbelievers that are rejecting those wealthy people, the ones that they think they have the power, they are being tested. And they are going through the test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for them. And that test is similar to the test that we have tested, that Allah has tested with these people, the people of the garden. And of course, the story and the lesson and the, the contemplation on that go beyond Quraysh, beyond the conflict of the unbeliever, the disbelievers with the Prophet wasallam into eternity, into then Allah, until the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inherits heavens and earth. It is a lesson for all of us. It is a test, the test of wealth, the test of power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests some of his servants with. So the, the main theme of this story is a trial, is a test, and that is the test by wealth and by power. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in verse 17 of Surah Al-Qalam, إِنَّا بَلَوْنَاهُمْ كَمَا بَلَوْنَا أَصْحَابِ الْجَنَّةِ We indeed have tested them like we tested the people of the garden, or the owners of the garden. And the test, as we know, is, is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah will test all of us. Allah will test the good and the bad, will test the, the believer and the unbeliever, will test the wealthy and the poor. But the test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may take a different shape and a different form, according to each and every one of us. But one of these tests is this particular type of test, and that is testing by power. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hands people a certain amount of wealth, a certain amount of control, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see what they do with it. So what is the story of the owners of the garden? Uh, it is narrated upon Qatada, a tabi'i, who was one of the students of Abdullah ibn Abbas. May Allah be, be pleased with both of them that this garden, this luscious garden, belonged to an elder. He said, كانت الجنة لشيخ. It used to belong to a righteous elderly person. And that man has children. And it was the custom of this righteous servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that at the time of harvest, every year, after he puts the fruits together, the harvest of his garden together, he will take what is enough for him and for his children and for his family for the whole year. But this garden was so wealthy and was so luscious that there's always more. And everything that is extra from what they need for the year, he will give away in zakah and in sadaqah and in charity to the poor. And this was what he did every year of his life. And his children would look around and they did not like what their father was doing. They thought if their father held on 
to this extra amount of wealth that he has given away, then they'll become a wealthier family. Then they will have more. Then they will have extra, more than their needs. And they would go to their father and they will protest his, what he's doing. And he will not listen to them. But then the father dies. And when the father dies, the children got together. And now they're in control of that garden. They are in control of that wealth. They are the owners of the garden. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ashab al-Jannah. They became Ashab al-Jannah. It was the father, and now it's them. Now the test is their test. And now they are the, order, the, the, the owners of al-Jannah. So what do they do? They get together, and they speak to each other, and they say, well, we need to stop this practice that we disapproved of at the time of our father, where he was wasting our wealth away. He was just, you know, squandering our money. Our money belongs to us, and there is our father. He would just give it away. And had he not do that, we would be very wealthy family. So from this day on, there will be nothing going to the poor. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing to us. And the words, the, 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 the verses of these of, uh, that we will recite, inshallah, we just recited and we will go through so concise but so beautiful. Just few words that actually draws a perfect, complete picture of what was going on. Like you're really watching a drama unfolding before your eyes. Just every word has a meaning to tell you what was going on inside their minds and what was the situation that is going on at that time. So they are gathering, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just in few words, He said, إِذْ أَقْسَمُوا لَيَصْرِمُنَّهَا مُصْبِحِينَ They swore, they were so determined that they will go on and they will just get all this harvest and they will do it early. مُصْبِحِينَ In the early morning, they will go on to their garden and they will get all the fruit out, they will harvest all of that, and what will happen? And Allah said, in, and that's the whole verse by itself. He said, وَلَا يَسْتَثْنُونَ And there will be no exception. They will make no partnership with the poor. They will make no exception of, with their wealth with the poor people. And in that, they fell immediately into two different sins. The first sin is they swore that the next morning they're going and they're going to get their harvest. And the mufassirin, the interpreters of the Quran, they said that immediately the first sin they fell in is they never linked that with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fruit is on the tree and the tree is in the garden and the garden is not right where they were. So by the time they go to the garden and they harvest the fruit, there is a lot of time and many things can happen. And you have to say, inshallah. You have to link your will to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have to mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we think that we have the power, we should always remember the Almighty and the All-Powerful. And the first sin they fill in, they fill in is not acknowledging Allah's will and they were just thinking about what they wanted to do. They want to go out, they want to get the harvest, and they completely forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their thinking and in their plotting. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Kahf, even teaching His Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and teaching us in verses 23 and 24, إِلَّا يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ إِذَا نَسِيكَ وَقُلْ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَهْدِيَنِ رَبِّي لِأَقْرَبَ مِنْ هَذَا رَشَدًا And never say of anything, I shall do such and such tomorrow. Allah said, never ever said that. إِلَّا يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ You always have to make an exception. They made no exception. وَلَا يَسْتَثْنُونَ They made no exception. So this verse when they said وَلَا يَسْتَثْنُونَ can be interpreted in two different ways. One of it is they made no exception when they said, inshallah, if Allah wills. Except with saying, if Allah will, and remember your Lord, when you forget and say, it may be thee that my Lord guides me unto the nearer way of truth than this. So always mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and linking 
the will of our action to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is an essential part of Iman. The second sin that they fell in, when they said, وَلَا يَسْتَثْنُونَ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَا يَسْتَثْنُونَ They will make no exception, meaning they will make no exception for the poor. They will not give the poor their due right. That their father, the father of these, inher- the, these heirs, the inheritors of that garden, used to give every year to the poor. The poor are used to that. It has been a custom in that particular place that that garden, the extra harvest will go to the poor. And they made, they said, this year we'll have no exception. And you see their nafs working at work. And we will see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show us their way of thinking and what was going on within their own nafs, their own soul. And at that time, what is working within it is an nafs al-ammara, the evil commanding self of these children. It's commanding them to, to, to deprive the poor from their due right. And they felt, they felt like this is a plan that is so achievable. The garden is there, the fruit is on the tree, and all we need to do is just get there a little earlier than usual, get the harvest in the boxes, and get the boxes out, and by the time the poor is, will be in the, in the garden, we'll just say, nothing is left, sorry. You, you, there is nothing for you. It's, it seems so simple and so achievable to them at that time. وَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ أَعْمَالَهُمْ And that's, this is how the way the shaytan beautifies and makes these actions easy and so achievable and so, so, so uh, within reach. And it was within their reach, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a different plan for them. That's why we, we Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us these stories. And it is the do right of the poor to actually get their part of the harvest on the day of harvest. And that is clearly outlined in Surah Al-An'am, verse 144. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَهُوَ الَّذِي أَنْشَأَ جَنَّاتٍ مَعْرُوشَاتٍ وَغَيْرَ مَعْرُوشَاتٍ وَالنَّخْلَ وَالزَّرْعَ مُخْتَلِفًا أُكُلُهُ وَالزَّيْتُونَ وَالرُّمَّانَ مُتَشَابِهًا وَغَيْرَ مُتَشَابِهِ كُلُوا مِنْ ثَمَرِهِ إِذَا أَثْمَرَ وَآتُوا حَقَّهُ يَوْمَ حَصَادِهِ وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُسْرِفِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, it is Allah who produces gardens that are terrorized and unterrorized. And date palms, and the crops, different shapes and tastes, their fruit and their seeds. It is Allah's creation. It is Allah that is providing all of that. And olives, and pomegranates. Similar in kind, but different in taste. Eat of their fruits when they ripen, but pay the due thereof. It is zakat, it is charity, according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's order, on the day of its harvest. So the father was really doing the right thing. And the sunnah... Is, is to, prove, to really, it is ordered that you give the due right on the day of harvest. You don't take it, you don't store it, you, don't, you just give it away on the day of the harvest and, and when it is related to agricultural produce. And waste not by extravagance, verily, he likes not those who waste by extravagance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُسْرِفِينَ But they decided that they will have none of that. And they felt, they went to bed, and they had a very an airtight plan that by the next morning, they will be wealthier people than they were ever were. Because this year, nothing is going out. The entire harvest will be theirs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us what happened at night. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَطَافَ عَلَيْهَا طَائِفٌ مِّن رَبِّكَ وَهُمْ نَائِمُونَ فَأَصْبَحَتْ كَالصَّرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us how swift his plot is. As they were asleep, a visitor from Allah came, a visitation from Allah. And the scholar said it is fire that completely ruined that garden. A visitation from your Lord at night burned it or destroyed it while they were asleep. They were completely heedless from what's going on. They completely unaware what was going on with their garden. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, so the garden, this luscious, green, beautiful, filled with fruit, 
became black by the morning, like a pitch dark night in ruins. It became ashes upon ashes. It became an area of complete destruction by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they're completely unaware of what is going on. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a different plan for their harvest. So here they are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to give us the picture of how they were, what they were, how they were going about. فَتَنَادَوْ مُصْبِحِينَ there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, so in the morning, they called out to one another as soon as the morning broke. At the break of dawn, they started waking each other up. Get up, let's go. We have a plan, we have work to do. We have to get all that harvest. It's all ours today. فَتَنَادَوْ مُصْبِحِينَ أَنِغْدُوا عَلَىٰ حَرْثِكُمْ Go get your own harvest. See, the words of Qur'an are very precise and very meaningful. He didn't say, وَقْدُوا عَلَى الْحَرْثِ Go to the harvest. Go to your own harvest. It is your own today. You know, they're so happy, they're so excited. Now, now this entire thing is ours. They have no idea what was going on. وَقْدُوا عَلَى حَرْثِكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَارِمِينَ If you truly want to go and execute your plan and get all that wealth to yourself. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to describe their affair to us. وَهُمْ يَتَخَافَتُونَ So they left the house and they were moving and they were conversing in secret low voices. They were whispering to each other in the crack of dawn in the morning. So nobody can hear them. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also gives us the picture of how people that are committing sin behave. Especially those who really truly believe in Allah and the Day of Judgment. They are not mujahireen. When they fall, fell into sin, and they still have a remainder of iman in them, they try not to really announce it. But it is a testimony from their own actions against themselves that they're doing something wrong. When you do something, and when we do something, I'm not, I don't mean the you, figuratively you, I'm just meaning you know, generally, if someone does a sin and the, the, and, or something that they're doing in secrecy, they're trying to hide from other people, they should always to think that maybe I'm doing something wrong. The Prophet ﷺ defined wrongdoing and sin. He said, الْإِثْمُ مَا حَاكَ فِي قَلْبِكَ مَا حَاكَ فِي صَدْرِكَ وَخَشِيتَ أَنْ يَطَّلِعَ عَلَيْهِ النَّاسِ He said, the wrongdoing, the wrong deeds, the sin is what lurks in your chest, in your heart. And you don't want people to find out about it. If there's any idea, you're not really sure whether it's legal, illegal, lawful, unlawful, sharia or no sharia. If you don't want other people to really know about it, if you have certain activities that you really don't want people to know about, then chances are that this is not good. And their affair as they're leaving the house in the morning, Allah describes the way they're going. They're whispering to each other and they're going, they're sneaking out in their own house, from their house, heading to that field, heading to the garden. يتخافتون. And they're just, you know, whispering and they're low tone. They're just kind of laying low. So no one will notice that they're going a little earlier and that they have a certain plan for that garden. وهم يتخافتون. What were they whispering to each other? They're reconfirming. Reconfirming what, what, they, what they have already planned. They're, they're whispering, There will be no poor people that will come into the, the garden tonight. There will be no needy people sharing your harvest with you today. They said, this is all ours. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mocks them and mocks their plan. And he said, Oh, now, now they have the power. Now they truly can do what they want to do. I mean, you can see this picture. They are filled with excitement. They are just kind of sneaking out and they're going to the field and they feel it's done deal. You know, we did it. Here it is. The field is just, you know, a few steps away and, and today we're wealthier than we ever were. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, yeah, don't you see? وَغَدَوْ عَلَىٰ حَرْدٍ قَادِرِينَ Now today they have the power. Of course they have nothing. Today, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have the power to prevent the pool taking anything of the fruit. Hard is, you know, the ulama, the scholars, the interpreters, they really had different opinions about what this particular word means. Hard. But most say it's but when, when you hold back, when you prevent, when you, when you protect your, your thing. And Allah said, now, now they can all truly have the power to protect their own wealth. But we know what happened to their wealth. We know Allah's plan. We know how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing them and trying them and teaching them. And they are capable of nothing. They are completely powerless, but they don't know it. And who are these people? It is most of us. Most people think they have the power. Most people think that if they have such and such amount in the bank, and we have you know, this and that, it's really mine. You know, I'm, I'm fully in control of it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always reminded us, remember, everything is Allah's. Allah owns everything. Everything belongs to Him. Even you, even ourselves belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The believers say, inna lillah wa inna lihi raji'un. We are to Allah. We belong to Allah. And what are we? Ibadullah. We are the slaves of Allah. Now, we may not understand really slavery. Well, but people at the time of the Prophet and the Sahaba, they understood what slavery means. That you and what you have completely belong to your owner. And who is our owner? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you are a slave to Allah, you are a slave to nobody else. If you belong to Allah, nobody can claim ownership over you. Absolutely not. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is re-emphasizing. He says they thought they really truly have the power over that. And they have the power to say you can do it and you cannot. You can take and you cannot. Like they control what the poor people will have. And they are completely powerless. Who was the truly poor person in that particular moment? They were. They just didn't know it. They have nothing. They have absolutely nothing. This group of people that are coming out of their houses with arrogance and say, لا يدخلنها اليوم عليكم مسكين Do not let any poor people in. They are very poor. They may be now poorer than the people they're talking about. They really have nothing. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us. No matter how rich you are, no matter how wealthy you are, no matter how strong you are, remember that your strength comes from, from Allah's strength. Your strength comes from Al-Qawi. Your wealth comes from Al-Ghani. Your Qudra, your power comes from Al-Qadr. We are to Allah. And anything that Allah bestowed upon us is a temporary trial, is a temporary test that we will be asked about on the Day of Judgment. So that's why we have to understand that this is a test. And this small story is very important. You can't really say enough about this. This is life. This is our test on this earth. Everything we have, everything we think is our health, our wealth, our family, our power, our talent, our gifts. It's all from who? From Allah. And it is all in our custody and to a certain time where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inherit that back and inherit us back. And that is our test. So they, now they thought they have the power and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mocks their plot. said, وَغَدَوْ عَلَىٰ حَفْدٍ قَادِرِينَ They are really truly powerful now. And they're heading on to their field. So they reach the, the garden and they look around and they see nothing but ashes. They see nothing but ruins. They look around, they look at each other and they say, we must have taken the wrong way. This is definitely, we must have taken the wrong turn. We are lost. فَلَمَّا رَأَوْهَا قَالُوا إِنَّا لَضَالُّونَ When they saw it, they said, we are truly lost. We, this cannot be true. This is not our garden. This ruined place is not ours. And at the same time, it has that meaning within. 
that they were astray. They were really lost. They were lost in their thinking. They were lost in their behavior. They were lost from the path of Allah and His prophets, the path of their own righteous father that taught them how to do this, taught them how to, to give out to the poor. But they went astray. So when they saw it, they said, we are truly astray. This cannot be ours. We have gone astray. We are lost. And then they looked around and then the reality hit. They were, they, they, the realization came. First moment of, the, of, this, of this test was utter disbelief. No, this is not happening to me. I, it's not possible that I've lost everything. I'm supposed to prevent the poor from getting this. I'm not the poor person. After this shock and disbelief, the reality started sinking in for them. They realized. No, we are the deprived one. We are not lost. This is, this used to be our garden. But now we have, we are deprived. So now, this is the moment. This is the pivotal moment of our story. This is the most important moment where someone have to make a decision. To either go back to Allah or go further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the moment of truth, if you will. When they had the realization that something is wrong. This is the wake-up call that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent for them. This is the heart shaking. See, some people, you can wake them up if you whisper in their ear. Some people, you have to set the alarm. Some people, you have to sit on top of them and shake them to wake up. And these people had to be shaken. And Allah shook them. Allah shook them real hard. And this is the pivotal moment in this story. And as if we reflect on the story of, of Qur'an, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala definitely knows, and Allahu a'lam, Allah knows best, it is so important that He put it in this book. And this moment, one of their best, you know, one of their brothers, qala awsatuhum, the one with the most middle way, the best of them, the one that, that usually, he's the closest to, to righteousness. The middle one. قَالَ أَوْسَطُهُمْ أَلَمْ أَقُلْ لَكُمْ لَوْ لَا تُسَبِّحُونَ Did not not say to you, you should praise Allah? You should mention your Lord? They were completely, the only time they mentioned Allah in this whole story, before this moment, was when they swore that they are going to prevent any part of their wealth to go to the poor. إِذْ أَقْسَمُوا لَيَصْرِمُنَّهَا مُصْبِحِينَ that was the only time they mentioned Allah before. And they had no other mention of Allah. There were no tasbih. There was no insha'Allah. There is no mentioning of the rights of Allah and the way of Allah. And now their brother said, didn't I say we should have mentioned Allah? Didn't you say? And, and, and didn't, you, didn't we say that you should praise your Lord? And now they started turning around. They chose the better way. Because you can either go in the way of repentance, in the way of going back, when Allah opens that door for you. See, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shakes people with the disaster, with the calamity, with something hard in your life, with something hard in the life of the ummah, if we are people of iman, we have to understand, if we are people of faith, Allah doesn't want to harm us. Sometimes Allah wants just to get our attention. And if our attention cannot be get gotten because of our stubbornness by the whisper, by the message, then something has to shake us. And Allah is all capable of shaking us really good. And that's what happened to them. And the other way is the way of stubbornness, the way of Iblis, the way of Shaitan, la'anahullah is whenever they, when shaitan realized the wrongdoing that he was doing, what happened to him? He was increasing in, their, in his stubbornness. Remember the story of 
Iblis and Adam and the, and the defiance that Iblis had before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the way of shaitan. shaitan. Do not follow in the footsteps of shaitan. Indeed, he is a, a clear enemy to you. So the way is to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not be stubborn. And that's, you see that that seed that the righteous father has already planted, it was hidden. It was hidden under levels of greed, of selfishness, of, of just love of this dunya. That's what they had. That's the only thing on their mind, walking into the garden. All of that was shaken away. You know, that seed of righteousness, that seed of good, started showing up on the surface now. And they say, Subhana Rabbina. Qalu Subhana Rabbina. They immediately remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in an admittance of guilt. So as they were walking to their guarding, their nafs Ammara was speaking to them. Do not let any poor people come in. Ammara is a, an evil commanding self. But when they were shaken, the nafs al-lawama came out. The blaming self. How would you do that? You don't remember who you are. You're a believer. You were raised by this righteous man. How can you not remember who you are? How can you not remember what you believe in? They started blaming themselves. And they started realizing their own guilt. قَالُوا سُبْحَانَ رَبِّنَا إِنَّا كُنَّا ظَالِمِينَ Oh, subhanAllah, glory to our Lord. Verily, we have been wrongdoers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, that that is usually a sign of a believer. See, a believer is not immune to sin. A believer is not an angel. It's a human being. You do right and you do good. And then you do also bad things out of the weakness of a human being. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Imran, verse 135, tells us how should a believer behave in this particular moment, the moment of truth, when you have to come to realization that you have went astray. We have deviated. We have went astray. We did something wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهِ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَمْ يُصِرُّوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ Beautiful ayah. The doors of hope and repentance widely open by this verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And those who when they have committed a legal act or wronged themselves with evil, tainted their own selves with evil, they, what do they do? They remember Allah. First thing these children said, Subhana Rabbi. Subhanallah. Remember Allah. Have the words of, the mention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your heart. Have it in your tongue. Remember Allah. Say, everyone that you're afraid of, that you do something wrong towards to, and, and you're, you, they have power and authority, you try to run away from them. You know, if, if I you know, go and, and, and attack or do something wrong against one of, you know, our physically strong brothers, and I see them away, you know, block away, I go somewhere else. I'm afraid. I don't want to face what I've done. Except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you do something and you wrong yourself, before Allah, you run to Him. When we do something wrong, before Allah, we go to Allah. Where, we, where else do we go? Where, where do we go? Except to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what Allah said. Zakarullah. First thing you do is you mention Allah. You reconnect. There's some ties that we have cut with Allah. The rope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of, we let go of. We cut it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first thing said, you hold back onto it. By the mention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Zakarullah. Then ask forgiveness. 
فاستغفروا لذنوبهم ومن يغفر الذنوب إلا الله and who else would forgive the sins except الغفار except the all forgiving Allah سبحانه وتعالى who will give you mercy except الرحيم الرحمن ومن يغفر الذنوب إلا الله ولم يصر على ما فعلوا it's an important thing said they they're just they're not defiant they're not stubborn they're not going to this obstinacy they don't they don't persist on what they were doing wrong وهم يعلمون while they notice and realize what's going on and that's all you need to do mention Allah be connect with him leave your sin and that is tawbah and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness So they realized that. And they said, Subhana Rabbina inna kunna zalimeen. Faqbala ba'aduhum ala ba'adun yatalawamun. And they started turning to one another in blame. Now it's only a few lines. Between now that you see the scene of this, oh, it was your fault. It was, no, no, it was you. You, you were the one that said that, that we should do this. You said we're going to be wealthy. No, it was you. You listened to me. They're blaming whose fault it is. Just a few minutes ago, فَتَنَادَوْ مُصْبِحِينَ They were enticing each other, they were working with each other, they were helping each other. And now when they see the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before their eyes, that cooperation and collaboration turn into blame. And that is the way that happens among the people when you see the people of evil collaborating and conspiring and plotting and they're like really best friends Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us on the day of judgment they will be worst enemy to each other they will be enemies to each other they will be blaming each other they will be cursing each other they will be asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to punish the other more than he is getting punished he dragged me into this. He helped me to this. You see, the good friends, not only the friends, Al Al Khalil is a little bit more than a friend. You know, Ibrahim Khalil al Rahman. Closest, you know, one of the closest people to you is your Khalil. And you see those close people that you may think, you know, they're really good allies and just love each other. You see that they're enemies, they're cursing each other. And these brothers that were just few lines, I mean, you can see in verse 22, they were just, you know, let's get up, let's go together, and let's do this. Just only by, by verse number 30, they're blaming each other. It was your fault. You, were the, you, didn't, you didn't stop me. You, 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 you listened to me. فَأَقْبَلَ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ يَتَلَاوَمُونَ But that is the blaming self working. And نَفْسُ اللَّوَّامَ فَأَقْبَلَ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ يَتَلَاوَمُونَ But then they came to the realization that it was a collective fault. It was all their fault. They were all partners in this. And they all deserved the punishment on this. قَالُوا يَا وَيْلَنَا Woe to us. They started feeling the fear before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the punishment. They were completely, for, they completely heedless of that. A few minutes ago. They were not thinking about the, the, the hereafter. And now they're thinking, Ya waylana, woe to us. Inna kunna taghin. Not only the first verse they said, in verse, tw uh, verse 29 they said, Inna kunna zalimin. We were transgressors. We, will, we were, excuse me, we were wrongdoers. We did wrong. We, were, we sinned. But then when they came to the realization of how severe their sin was, they say, we have transgressed the limits of Allah. We have stepped out the boundaries that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has drawn for us as human beings, as people of righteousness. Inna kunna taghin. That is worse than zalim. At-taghiya is the transgressor. At-tughat. Inna fir'awna tagha fil ard. Pharaoh was a taghiya. He transgressed over his limits. So Allah puts limits for every one of us. تِلْكَ حُدُودُ اللَّهِ فَلَا تَقْرَبُوهَا These are the limits of Allah. Do not get near it. And they came to the realization that they transgressed their, their limits. They thought they are powerful before the all-powerful. 
they felt that they have the power to give sustenance to the poor. They felt they are the ones that are giving risk to others. You know, this is a major problem. And they realized all of that. They said, this is worse than committing a sin. This is worse than committing a sin. This is tagyan. We have placed ourselves where we should not be. We put ourselves in the power before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the all-powerful. We felt like we give people where Allah gives us. We felt people need us and look at us now. We are the all-needy before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَالُوا يَا وَيْلَنَا إِنَّا كُنَّا طَاغِينَ So they went through these three stages of the realization of what they did. First they remembered the mention of Allah. Then they admitted their wrongdoing against themselves and against the poor people. They realized the sin they did. And then most importantly, in the last stage they realized their tughyan, which is realizing the position they put themselves in before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They felt they are almighty, all-powerful in their own way, in their own mind. And this is one of the things that Pharaoh did. مَا عَلِمْتُ لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَهٍ غَيْرِي I know no God but me. And Pharaoh said, that is Tughyan. When someone forget who's in charge, who's in control, that is Tughyan. See, the Taghya, the tyrants, is what they call them, you know. The tyrants, when they are in control, powerful army, powerful intelligence, you know, all of these uh, police and all of that, they feel like they have absolute power over people. And that is tyranny. That is Tughyan. Because they forget who really is in charge. Who really has the power over everyone, including that person. And that's where they became Tughat. That's where these people became Tughat. Because they forgot who they are before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like tyrants forget who they are before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah gives them some power, a temporary power, that definitely will end when they die. Even if nothing else happens, it will end when they die when they leave this world. So any wealth, any power, anything when it comes to us, we have to know one or two things. It's either leaving us or leave, we are leaving it. We are going to part with everything in this dunya. Either that thing is going to go away from us, we will see it going away, or we will leave and, and, and it will be there. Whether it's a powerful house, a beautiful house, a powerful car, powerful army, wealth, big bank account, one of two things will happen. Either that will go away or we will go away. And we have to always remember who we are. So they, after that, after they realized that they were transgressors, they were tughat, they turned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with repentance. And they said, عَسَى رَبُّنَا أَن يُبْدِلَنَا خَيْرًا مِنْهَا إِنَّا إِلَىٰ رَبِّنَا رَاغِبُونَ we hope that our Lord, and now we are turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being the poor slaves that they are, being the needy slaves that they are before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See how few moments can change everything in a human heart. When they were walking to that field, they were feeling no need for nobody. They were feeling that they are, well, they are going to prevent people from getting something. They'll make no exception today. And now look at them. This is the true state of every human being. Is we are needy and he is not. We are poor and he is not. Subhanallah. He said, Inna ila Rabbina raghibun. Truly we turn to our Lord wishing for good. That he may forgive our sins. That he may reward us in the hereafter. And he may give us, replace this garden for us. We are truly now the poor people. Now they came to the realization. They reviewed themselves. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, كَذَلِكَ العذاب. This is the punishment of Allah. When someone transgresses, when someone transgresses the limits, when someone be, be, becomes sinful before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we forget our slavery to Allah, 
to forget that we are ibad, that we are slaves to Allah, that we are always, no matter how strong we are, no matter how wealthy we are, we are in need, in desperate need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will be shaken. كذلك العذاب Allah said, this truly is a punishment for what they did. But there is worse punishment. So don't, don't just pay attention to only what happens in this dunya. كذلك العذاب ولا عذاب الآخرة أكبر لو كانوا يعلمون. And indeed, the torment, the punishment of the hereafter is greater if they but knew. And the, the torment or to be punished in this dunya is definitely better than being punished in the akhirah, in the hereafter. Because in this dunya, if someone needs the punishment and they get the punishment, it opens the door for them to go back to Allah and not be subjected to the punishment in the hereafter. So you can punish someone you really love. You can punish your children. Loving them. But you deliver punish, punishment for them. You take away privileges from them. You know, you send them to time out, you punish them. Sometimes, you know, even you, sometimes a little small physical to just get their attention. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does. Just to get someone's attention. Because Allah loves us. Allah loves his, the believers, his servants. He would not let them go astray unless they want to. The Prophet ﷺ said, all of you will enter paradise except the ones who refuse. كُلُّكُمْ يَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةِ إِلَّا مَنْ أَبَى And they said, O oh Prophet of Allah, who would refuse to go to Jannah? He said, those who will go astray from my sunnah. They are refusing to go to Jannah. So Allah, Allah said, وَمَا يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابِكُمْ إِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ وَآمَنْتُمْ What would Allah do with your torment if you truly are grateful to Allah and you believe in Him? Why do you think Allah would torment you for? وَمَا يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابِكُمْ إِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ وَآمَنْتُمْ What would Allah do with your torment with punishment, punishing you if you are grateful to Allah and you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So the torment in this dunya is, is something almost desirable. You never ask Allah for that though. Always the Prophet وسلم, said, We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the forgiveness without being punished and al afiyah and, and to be saved, to be, to be uh, in, in, in shield, be, to be shielded from all the bad things that can happen to us. This is the, 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 the dua of the Prophet You don't say, oh Allah, punish me now. Please punish me as much as you want now. Don't punish me. This is not the way of Allah, of the Prophet The Prophet came to a man who was dying and he saw that he was in miserable pain and he was going through major problems before dying. And he said, what did you do? And he said, I asked Allah to cleanse me before he takes me. And he said, Ya akhi, la tutiqu hadha. You cannot take this. Ask Allah al-afwa wal afiyah. Ask him forgiveness and ask him safety. Don't ask Allah to punish you now. Allah has better than that. Allah has, has forgiveness. Allah is all forgiving. Allah just wants you to come back. And if you come back, he does what was... Allah has said, I will not do anything. Ma yaf'alullahu bi'azabikum. Who would I do with your punishment? In shakartum wa amantum. So what happened to them was a misfortune. You know, they lost their wealth, they lost their garden, and in, in, in worldly thinking, it's a disaster. They, they are now, they turn from wealthy people to absolutely poor people. From the ones who would turn beggars away to beggars themselves. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, that it, when something like that happens, we have to go review ourselves. Like these people reviewed themselves. Ya waylana inna kunna taghin. Inna kunna zalimin. They know they were transgressors. They were wrongdoers. 
And Allah wants us to review ourselves when something a calamity hits us. Whether it's on a personal level, whether it's on a family level, whether it's on a community or even on an ummah level. We have to review what we're doing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Shura, verse 30, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُوا عَنْ كَثِيرٌ Whichever, whatever misfortune happens to you, it is because of the things your hand have, have brought. Things that you have gained. The sins, the deviation from the way of Allah and the way of His Prophet Muhammad wasallam. And for many of them, for many of these deviations, for many of these things, Allah grants forgiveness. If Allah was going to punish us for every little deviation, we would live a miserable life on this earth. But when something like that happens, when we have, we are, when we have misfortune, we have to go back and review ourselves. And one of the reflections, let's reflect back on the meanings here that we learned tonight, inshallah, in the last few minutes. First thing is, when we do good, we should never be tired of doing good. We should never get tired and be bored or, or just feel like, you know what, it's always me, me, every time they need something, they come to me. It's just nobody but me. I mean, you know, it's just, I'm not going to give this year. This fundraiser, I'm not going. <laughs> it's always me, you know, you have nobody but me. And Allah, the Prophet ﷺ, in two hadith, and they're both in a, in a tabarani, the Prophet ﷺ said, Inna lillahi aqwaman. اختصهم بالنعم لمنافع عباده يقرها فيهم ما بدلوها فإذا منعوها نزعها منهم فحولها إلى غيره. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah has certain people that He gives certain bounties and gifts to to benefit others. See, when Allah gives us this, the purpose of that is we can benefit others with our wealth, with our knowledge, with our strength. With whatever Allah gives us, He gives it to us for a reason. And that reason, the purpose of that, is so we can be beneficial to other people. الْخَلْقُ كُلُّهُمْ عِيَالُ اللَّهِ وَأَحَبُّهُمْ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَنْفَعُهُمْ لِعِيَالِهِ All people are the in custody, the, the, are, are the, in the custody of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are cared for by Allah. And the most beloved of people is the one that benefits His his people more, the most. So the Prophet said, Allah has certain people that He gives bounties and He gives things for, so they can benefit others. And as long as they are doing that, as long as they are benefiting others, as long as they are giving away some of that bounty that Allah gave to them, then Allah will keep providing for them. فَإِذَا مَنْعُوهَا But when they held back, Allah takes it away from them. When they hold back, Allah takes it away from them. See what did happen to these people. They wanted to hold back some of the fruits of garden. So what their father, their father wouldn't just give everything away. He would take everything that is enough for him and for his family and for his children and their families for an entire year and whatever extra he gives away. When they ask you, what do we spend? This is Quran. Say what's extra. Allah doesn't want you to leave your family starving and give away. But these people said we are making no exception. And Allah's, the Prophet said whenever they hold back, then Allah will take it away and they put it to other people. will give it to other people. And in a similar hadith, uh, and on the authority of Ibn Abbas, and this is a hadith marfu' مَا مِنْ عَبْدٍ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ نِعْمَ وَأَسْبَغَهَا عَلَيْهِ ثُمَّ جَعَلَ حَوَائِجَ النَّاسِ إِلَيْهِ فَتَبَرَّمْ فَقَدْ عَرَّضَ تِلْكَ النِّعَمْ لِلزَّوَالِ There is not one slave of Allah that Allah gives to, gives some bounties to, and then people come and ask him, and then he turn him away, or he just, he just get, you know, disgusted with that, or, you know, just bored with it, and he said, you know what? There's some other people than me, you know. I'm not the only one driving a Mercedes around me, you know. And, and, and they, you know, they just say, enough of that. They, they tabarram. You know, they just hate it. They don't like to be asked. Then Allah, the Prophet said they're exposing their wealth to be taken away. They're losing their insurance policy. 
with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People who told back something they can give, something extra, something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained. They're, they're obligated zakah, that they are exposing themselves to the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So finally, let's ask ourselves a quick question. What happened to these brothers, to the children of that righteous man? Was that good or bad for them? Was it good or bad? It was good for them. Although it, it, you know, it sounds, you know, they lost their wealth and they lost their garden. But what happened to them was a much needed awakening so it, they can be spared the worst punishment of the hereafter. So remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes the story, وَلَعَذَابُ الْآخِرَةِ أَكْبَرُ The torment of akhirah is much worse. They were spared that. They came to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what happened to them is actually very good for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَعَسَى أَنْ تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ You may hate something, dislike something, but it's good for you. Because if it draws you nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's good for you. Even if it hurts. Even if it's something that is painful, that pain is temporary in this dunya. But when it draws you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's good for you. And you may like something and it's bad for you. You may like to be very rich. In one word, the, 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 it said, Abdi a'taytuka ma yakfiq wa tatlubu ma yutliq. I give you what's enough for you, but you ask something that will make you a tyrant. You know, sometimes if we ask for extra wealth, we may deviate. You know, wealth is corrupting. And, and you see, it is, it is history that tells you the wealthiest people on the face of the earth are the most corrupt ones. And they seem like they never have enough. And they never satisfied with what they have. The worst people usually, I'm not making, you know, it's not a general, but some, most, some of the worst people are the most wealthy people that have more than enough, but they want more. And they commit crimes. And they cause suffering in the world just to have more. So sometimes the things that we hate may be good for us. But the things that we want more of may not be good for us. So we always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Afwa wal-Afiyya. Al-Afwa wal-Afiyya. Forgiveness and what is good for us. And then, lastly, one of the hidden meanings in this surah, in this verse, in this story, is the good deeds of the father can reflect good on the children. See, one of the things, and this is, there are two good stories in the Qur'an to show us, that if the father was good, Allah would not forget his children. If the parents were good, were righteous people, Allah will take care of their children after they're gone. So why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not let these people go astray with that punishment and then punish them in the akhirah? Because of the good deeds of their father. Because the father was good then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not let the children go astray. Even if they need heart shaking to come back. Even if they need a little punishment in this dunya. So they can be back. Allah will bring them back. Because of the good deeds of their father. And this is recited in the Quran in, in a story that we will go over in Surah Al-Kahf. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected the wealth of two orphans. You know the story of Musa alayhi salam and the righteous person. And there was, he built a wall to protect the wealth of two orphans. Why? It's in, it's in Surah Al-Kahf. He said, وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمَا صالحة. Because the father was a righteous man. So Allah will take care of them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that this is an insurance policy for your children. You know, forget about this life insurance thing. If you really want a true insurance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is in Surah An-Nisa verse number 9. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلْيَخْشَ الَّذِينَ لَوْ تَرَكُوا مِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّةً ضِعَافًا خَافُوا عَلَيْهِمْ فَلْيَتَّقُوا اللَّهِ وَلْيَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا He said, those who leave people behind them, and they fear for them that they'll be weak, and they will be subjugated to the bad things in this life, then let them do two things. Fear Allah, and always say the right thing. Fear Allah, have taqwa. And always do the right thing and always say the right thing. 
and we are out of time with that and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for me and for you forgiveness and to accept our deeds.